Hi, I'm Don Stegall. I've been doing a video series on YouTube on 46 engines and some 40s. Uh, for the 2015 rules cycle, the RC Pro Committee approved Club 46 Gold. This allows 46 engines to run in Club 40 and they don't exceed the average 100 mile per hour speed with a 46. So the next engine I'm doing in this series is the Evolution Engines 46 NX. Evolution has a complete range of engines from um, a 40 that's in a smaller case to the 46 and they have a 60 as well. I have had this open just to take a brief look at it, but I haven't actually torn the engine down. What I'm going to do is show you some of the mounting issues with the engine. Uh, there aren't actually issues, it's just what it fits. Um, and I'll take it apart to a degree and clean it and get it ready for break-in. It comes with a muffler. I haven't taken it apart to see if it has a baffle in it, but I suspect it does. The engine itself has a remote needle valve assembly and the carburetor is similar to a lot of other carburetors. Mm -hmm. It does have a screw inserted into the carburetor that looks to be the same size as the screw of the needle valve. So I believe it could be converted to a front needle valve engine if you needed to for some reason. Um, we'll find that out. Um, the needle valve assembly bolts onto the back plate and because of that, it has longer screws. Um, the head of the engine is kind of oblong for additional cooling at the rear, especially. And um, we're going to take it apart and see what the combustion chamber looks like. So the first thing I'm going to do is take off the back plate. I've already had it off, so it's easy for me to get this one off. It's not torqued down. Put the remote needle valve assembly aside. <clears throat> and looking at the back plate, it has a piston skirt relief on it. Now, I haven't turned the engine over uh, very much, and I don't remember, but I don't actually see the piston hitting an area, but it looks like it comes real, real close. So I think if you're using a replacement Quickie 500 backplate mount to mount this engine on there, you need a backplate mount with a piston relief. Now, Horizon provides two screws that are the shorter ones for the back plate mount so that you can take that remote needle valve assembly off and not have to get extra screws, which is a nice touch. So it's no problem to take the remote needle valve assembly off. Now, if you're mounting it on a quickie, you can mount the remote needle valve to the uh, fuselage um, or even to the back plate mount. Um, so there are multiple options for that. Or you could use a jet remote needle valve assembly that 
fits onto the exhaust port. So all the same options that you typically have with the 40 engines. The first thing I want to do is check to see if this engine has the same mounting pattern as the OS40. This is a jet OS40 mount that I've had other 46 and 40 engines on. And I know that the distance from the firewall to the face of the thrust washer should be 3.85 inches. With it mounted on the mount, the lugs fit perfectly. So actually it's just a little bit shorter. It, it comes up at 3.725 inches, which is about 25 thousandths less than a OS 46. So you may have to shim the back plate mount. Um, to not have interference with your spinner on your cow if you switch it out for an OS 46. The JIT Quickie 500 backplate mounts come in at least three varieties. Um, 46 engines work great on Quickie 500 airplanes for sport flying. And there are not many 40s left except for racing engines. So for sport flying, you may choose to use a um, 46NX for sport flying. And you will pick the right back plate mount. This back plate mount has a flat piston relief. This is, I believe, referred to as the OS back plate mount. The Thunder Tiger Pro 40 mount has dimples in it to clear the piston skirt. It would probably work in this one just fine because as I said, there's just a little bit of um, interference. I had to grab something because this has got a key thrust washer on it. So it's got a flat spot on the crankshaft. So the drive thrust washer will come off easily Save some of your broken props and cut them off and use them to hold drive washers in place while you're working on your engines. Plus you can also use it to rotate it if you have to. It makes it significantly easier. So the other factor with the back plate is, does it actually fit? So what we're going to do is slide one in. Now these jet mounts have an O-ring on them. And this one slides down right to the O-ring. However, there is an engine fan that prevents it from going all the way in. And what you can do is grind your quickie mount so that you don't grind the fans on the engine. You shouldn't grind the fans on the engine uh, if you're using it in AMA racing. Um, removing metal from the engine is not allowed. So what I would recommend doing is putting a piece of tape around the uh, O-ring to keep any metal from getting in it and using a Dremel sanding drum and just cutting out a little area for it to fit the engine fan. <clears throat> In terms of the back plate mounts, I think it would be better off to get one with the flat. There are other options for back plate mounts for quickies. DarylKatyRC.com sells a back plate mount that's a universal back plate mount. 
And it's universal from the standpoint that it fits the same bolt pattern as Thunder Tiger Pro 40s and OS 46s. So I'm going to try sticking that mount on just to see if we have the right fit. So with the back plate on and the mount on, uh, we don't have the issue with the fin that we have when we use a replacement back plate mount because the back plate itself is close to an eighth of an inch thick. And um, so this mount fits right on. And the Viper 500 universal mount works just fine as well. I've already tried it. The next thing we want to know is what mufflers will fit this engine. Uh, with the stock mufflers, sometimes the, they come apart. And um, if you don't take some steps to keep them together with these two-piece mufflers, and you may be replacing a muffler. And it's good to know what you can add to it because you might want to add a uh, semi-tuned pipe or a, even a uh, tune pipe. This is the one piece black muffler by Max Products. And this one has the same mounting pattern as the OS 46 and the Thunder Tiger Pro 40. So we're gonna try sticking the Max muffler on here. The Max Muffler fits right on. Um, so we know this is an OS 46 compatible muffler bolt pattern. I could have just measured it, but I like to check things out and make sure they really fit and that there aren't any interferences because uh, with the head fans, the Max Muffler has this uh, header that has uh, bevels on it. We could have had interference there, but we don't. So the Max Muffler will work fine on this engine. And when I do the break-in and the performance videos, I'll compare the black muffler to the um, stock muffler. And I may even try a jet tune muffler just to see what RPMs the engine can get to. Now I'm gonna to start to take the engine apart. Okay, so now I'm gonna disassemble the engine and we're gonna take a look at it. First thing I wanna do is remove the carburetor. The carburetor does not have an O-ring on the bottom. So they're, they're coming on precision fit, but actually after looking closely, there's a rubber seal inside the case. Now that has some implications. When we clean the engine, if we clean it, we can't use a solvent like lacquer thinner or it'll damage that o-ring and i don't want to take that o-ring out just to get the engine running so we need to keep in mind that we can't uh use a solvent like lacquer thinner on this engine
Now I'm going to take the head off. I'm going to use one of the wrenches provided by Evolution. And I haven't had the head off, so these will be torqued kind of tight. And I'm going to take them off in a the same pattern that I use for tightening down the screws. The head comes off and we see that there is actually a button in the head that has the combustion chamber and that means you can change the combustion chamber without changing the actual head fins. I'm going to leave the glow plug in. It's got, it's got shims on the head button. And what I'm going to do is rotate the engine and the cylinder slides right out. Nice precision fit. This is a ABC engine. This is a brass cylinder that's chromed. And I'm going to see if I can get the piston out easily. Well, it's not coming right off the crank pan, but with some needle nose pliers, pulled it right off. And we have the piston out. Now, one thing I forgot to do was to mark which was the back side of the crankshaft rod which is something you should do. I happen to remember that the little plastic bushing was on the front when I took it out. So what I'm gonna do is take an X-Acto knife and we'll make two little marks that are parallel on the back of the rod so that I'll know how to keep my orientation in the future. It feels nice and free. I don't feel any roughness in the bearings at all. It looks very clean on the inside. I don't like to take a chance on any remaining metal particles. So what I'm gonna do is take off my prop stub. And I'm gonna take the drive washer off and it's got a wash a little washer behind it don't lose that so the engine feels good the safest thing to clean an engine well another thing is that this engine has a sealed bearing on the front so you don't want to use a solvent um, when you're cleaning the engine it might seem like a waste but I use fuel to clean the engine. It's only 5% so it's relatively cheap. And you use fresh fuel for each cleaning of an engine. Just uh, have a jug to discard your, your um, fuel in. After putting it in a fuel, you can feel that the bearings are very smooth. There's no real in play. Um, but now I need to dry off the, the motor. Sorry, I need to dry off the engine.
And I'm also going to clean the piston. And the cylinder. And even the head button. And that completes the disassembly of the engine. One thing, and what I'm gonna do before I start assembling the engine again is I'm gonna use some Dextron 2 ATF fluid. And I'm gonna lubricate that rear bearing real well. Now it feels even smoother. And even though this is a sealed bearing, some oil and fuel can get into it. So I'll lubricate the front bearing. Now a lot of times I actually change bearings on the engines before I even run them because the cage on the bearings, at least on the rear bearing of this engine is a metal cage and I like the uh, plastic retainers for the, for the um, ball bearings. But the goal is just to get this engine running and find out its performance in a purely stock configuration. So I'm going to put the piston back in carefully. And it's no trouble to get the piston back on. So now I'm going to take the cylinder and before I do anything, I'm going to lube the inside of the area where the cylinder is going and I'm going to all the outside and inside of the cylinder. This will make it slot in easy and it'll be pre-lubed for when we get ready to run it. The cylinder fits right back in place and the first thing I want to do is put the head button back on and put the head on. And now I'm going to tighten down the head bolts. It's a fail thing unless you have a torque wrench. I need to get a torque wrench, but most people don't have one, so I just have developed a feel for how tight the bolts need to be. Now, when you're using a wrench where you've got the long part out, you have to be careful because you can easily over torque and strip out a, uh, a, uh, you can easily strip out a screw hole and that's not a good thing. So I ran the screws all the way down to an almost tight position. Now I'm going to do the final torquing. And as soon as the piston hits the uh, top of the port, uh, it starts hitting compression. Now I want to see how the engine feels without a glow plug in it. And even though you don't want to turn over an engine very much until you start running it, it's okay to rotate it once or twice because it's not going to start on the first flip or on the first hit of the glow starter anyway. So unless you heat the cylinder before you start the brake in, uh, you're going to have a little bit of extra resistance. And what I'm going to do is take out the glow plug. And 
And this has a very nice pinch at the top. And you'll want to make sure that when you run this engine, you bring it up to temperature and up to speed and not running sloppy rich, or you will destroy that pinch and your engine will be junk. So I'm going to go ahead and put the back plate back on. Now I'm going to torque down the back plate screws. Be careful with this because these don't have a lot of thread area and you can strip them. So snug is plenty fine for the back plate. And it still turns over fine so we don't have an issue with the back plate. And I'll put the glow plug back in. So I've got the carburetor back on and I will press it down pretty good. So it's got a good fit against that seal. And I'm only going to use a, a uh, driver to tighten the carburetor. And attach the fuel line back. And with the glow plug in and with the carb open, my prop started slipping on me. <clears throat> it's got a whole lot of compression. <clears throat> so now the only thing I need to do before I test run the engine is to mount the muffler. It's good to use the little lock washers that come with the muffler bolts. And this one has steel gaskets. Steel or aluminum. I think they're probably actually aluminum from the feel of them. And when you're tightening the muffler bolts down, uh, you need to use something other than just a uh, driver. You need to use the Allen wrench where you have the long side for leverage. There's more thread in the muffler you don't want the muffler coming off in flight. So here we have the engine ready for break-in. And I'm going to put it on the test stand today. And um, I'll show you how I break in the engines. And then we'll get a little performance information. While I'm breaking in engines in this class, I use a prop that's no longer produced. It's the 7.8 by 6 carbon fiber combat prop. I've balanced it. I use these for break-in and I use them for simulating the in-air flight conditions. Because if you use something like a 9.6 on this engine, uh, that's actually a little bit too much load for it during break-in. And I'll be using this prop with a Dubro spinner nut. I like them because they fit the cones in the uh, starters well. And tighten it down. I'll, I'm not going to flip it over with this prop by hand because these props are sharp. And 
it pulls through compression nicely. I don't hear any knocking or anything other than what I would expect. So this engine is now ready to go on the test stand. One note about the test stand. On the earlier PSP test stand, the mounts that hold the, the engine down were taller and the remote needle valve would not work. However, with the current mounting system on the PSP stand, there's no problem with interference from the remote, remote needle valve. And right now I have the old mount or the old um, stand on my pole and I'm gonna have to put these uh, engine standoffs onto the um, PSP test stand that's on the pole. The test stand that's on the pole is not a vibration absorbing test stand like this one. This one actually is spring loaded. When you're running big engines that produce a lot of vibration, this keeps you from getting uh, uh, too many hard knocks on the engine. But with these two stroke engines, it's not an issue. <clears throat> As I said, I'm going to do the break-in this afternoon. It's a nice Sunday, and um, I already have my test stand set up, and I'm going to put it on the bench, and I'll take the break-in. I use a heat cycling method where I run it for 30 to 60 seconds, then stop it and let it cool off, and then run it another 30 to 60 seconds and let it cool off. I do that again. And then I increase to two to three minute runs. I make sure I get it up to heat and up to RPM um, down 500 to 1,000 from the peak uh, pretty quickly. So it's not blubbering rich because, as I said, you'll damage the engine if you run it blubbering rich. Uh, and it's really best to get it started on the first hit of the, uh, the starter or on the first flip, which is kind of hard to do. Uh, but if you uh, put your finger over the carb and draw some fuel in, um, a lot of times you can get that to happen. So thanks for watching. I'll be making more videos. I'm doing the Magnum XLS 46. I've already done the uh, OS 46 AX2, but I'm going to redo that video because I'm not happy with it. Um, and I'm going to get performance information on all these 46 engines that are legal for Club 46 Gold. And hopefully it'll give you some um, information that you can use when you're deciding what engine you want to put on your airplanes. Thanks for watching my videos. Uh, if you've not subscribed already, please do. And check out the links in the video for some of the other things that I work on. There's a link to RC Pros, StegallHobbies.com, my drill bit charts and RC Calculator's Android applications, and to uh, Rich's Brew Fuel, who makes a very nice fuel. They use it for the uh, pylon gnats and Rich's Brew sponsors Club 40. If you're racing Club 40, contact me or Ken Erickson to find out about getting Rich's Brew fuel for your contest. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you at the break-in stand.